be here and to be able to speak a word unto you this morning. I hope you are praying for me. Amen. Amen. And to our First Lady, amen, in her presence. Our gracious First Lady, truly we love our pastor and our First Lady. Amen. I see my girls here. Hey, girls. Those are my girls that are here on this morning, and I'm glad that they came to be with us on today. Truly, this is a special day for me and my family, uh, my husband and I, on March 6th, celebrated 32 years of marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm excited. So this is a special week for us, my husband and I, and it's not a coincidence. Thank you very kindly. It's not a coincidence. We did not think it was going to last that long. Someone said to me just, just the other night, they said, I remember you, Vandals Green, um, in the beginning. I, all I can remember you saying uh, was, he just won't do right. I said, boy, you got to be careful what you say. I said, but here's the testimony, sister. God can make him behave. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, you see? All right, I said, God can make him behave. So I'm excited. He's behaving, y'all. He's behaving. Some of you know about Jared's. Amen. <laughs> this is the hand. This, this is the hand. <laughs> oh, only only uh, Facebook pastor, Elder Green. Amen. Facebook, word of encouragement, man. Amen. So we're excited. We so thank you. But this is a very sensitive week for us. Uh, also, uh, March is just one of those months. But March 9, this day, is a very, very special day because it is my son's birthday. Amen. And some of you know my son. My son died three years ago in an automobile accident and he would be turning 31 on today. So my girls, we're celebrating, amen. My husband and I, this is a bittersweet, bittersweet. You know, you can eat something that's sweet and salty. Well, this is sweet and salty, bittersweet. But more sweet than bitter. Amen. We can give the Lord glory for that. I'm excited because I asked the Lord as this day was approaching, I said, Lord, March 9, little did I know I would actually have this occasion to speak to you on this morning, on this day. But God reminded me of my purpose, evangelist, when I thought about what I would say on this day. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew. I won't be before you long. Matthew chapter 26, verse 6 through 13. Matthew chapter 6 verses 6 through 13. I will read. And now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, 
and poured it on his head. Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And you may read along with me. Um, verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman, for she have wrought a good work upon me? For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she have poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in all the world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial. Amen. The scriptures have been read. You may be seated. I wrestled with um, the subject, but I like to speak on this morning connected for the cause of Christ. Connected for the cause of Christ. When I thought about this day and that this day was so precious to me and sensitive, I begin to think about those words that we just read in verse 13. Verily, verily, I say unto you, what soul, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. I quite didn't really get it. I heard it, but it didn't hit me until I thought about my son. And as I was meditating, those words kept coming back to me, purpose, evangelist, purpose, purpose. And as I thought about purpose memorial, Memorial. I said, okay, okay. What do you want me to say about this purpose, Lord, that would connect to verse 13? That this woman did something so precious to you to you. Now, the disciples didn't care. Matter of fact, they were upset, indignant. What are you doing? What, what, are, you, what are you doing taking that expensive oil? It could be sold. We could have the money and it can buy so much more. But Jesus knew that what she was doing was significant. It had purpose in what he had been planning to do. 
They didn't see the connection. They didn't understand the purpose. What they can see with the natural eye, it was just a waste. Why waste your time? Why do that? Why is it important? Why would you look at that? But Jesus said, what this woman has done, it connects to me. She's done something that I and only I understand from this point. But if you were just looking on, you wouldn't understand it. But if you knew what I knew, then what I could say, it will be going down in history. What may look insignificant, unimportant, it ain't me, it's not my family, not my brother, not my sister, not my mama. But what Jesus said, what this lady has done is going to associate with the preaching of the gospel forever throughout the entire world. It shall be done as a memorial. She shall be memorialized. She shall be remembered. The act she has done shall be remembered. It's going down. Whenever that gospel is going to be preached, the very fact that she took ointment and brought the box and and prepared, anointed my head, anointed my feet, and wiped them with her hair. It shall be remembered. And it will be told. When I thought about the act of this woman, how precious it was to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I said, Lord, there's a connection. There's a connection to everything that happens. It truly works together for the good to them that love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. As I thought about this day, I thought about my son, how my girls and I look to do something as a memorial. But many of you did not know my son, my niece, who also was involved in a accident with my son, both died December 20th, 2020, three years ago. He was 27 and she was 31. At my son's funeral, my son ran from the Lord. Can I say that? He ran. And what I'm about to say, I don't want anybody to feel offended because I can talk about him. He's my son. I can talk about him. But this reminded me of a purpose. As I prepared to come before you today on March 9, I said, Lord, 
you put a burden on me. And it's connected to my son and my niece's death. Some know that attended my son's funeral, but my son truly ran from the Lord. Sweet, sweet boy, my Ben. He was my only begotten son. There's no one like a boy, child. I prayed for a boy child, and I got a boy child. Be careful what you pray for. I said, boy, I said, Lord, I want all boys. Some of y'all laughing because y'all know how mannish all boys, an uh, all boy can be. But I wanted a all boy. And I got a all boy. My son, he came to me when he was young and he said, Ma, I had a dream that the Lord was coming to get me. He must have been about 9, 11 years old. I had a dream, Mom, that the Lord was coming to get me. I said, what you tell him, Ben? He said, he asked me, was I going to be ready? I said, what you tell him? He said, I told him yes. But little did he know that he was going to come as soon as he did to get him. My son had been baptized in Jesus' name, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. But one thing I wish, he had a praying mother, and he had a praying father. But one thing I wish for my son is that he had learned to pray for himself. Come on, somebody. I'm going somewhere with this one. I wish my son had learned to pray for himself. He had, that's the only thing I really kind of regret, that he didn't learn to pray for himself. He knew how to ask for prayer. He knew how to come up for prayer. But I'm saying to actually go to God face to face for himself. He didn't know how to do that. Matter of fact, that's what I was telling you. He ran. And I don't know exactly what he was running from, but whatever it was, my niece was running with him. Both of them was running. Both of them, my niece, filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit when she was about six or seven years old, baptized in Jesus' name, children of God. But for some reason, Restless, restless, had a restless spirit, didn't know how to rest, just feet. You know, the Bible said that there's uh, six things that the Lord hates, and seven is an abomination. Save, sanctify, Holy Ghost, feel, but I think he just couldn't cut loose of those things. Six things, feet running swift to mischief. One thing I don't think he did was shed innocent blood. And I pray to God that he didn't. But what I'm just telling you here is that filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, looking looking for peace, looking and searching, had everything given to him, 
had an education, graduated from the University of Detroit with his bachelor's, had an opportunity to 